What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Today we've got the official data download for the new Hawkins and Killer Sugo Fest. We already broke down exactly what those characters did in the video yesterday when they, when they actually revealed them on Twitter. So I'm not really going to be repeating much of what we talked about in yesterday's video. My opinions kind of still stand as, as what they were kind of were when they revealed. I think Killer's a pretty decent unit, you're going to have great additions with Super Tandem Kid. And I think Hawkins is very fascinating and I kind of like the way that they designed him. And the fact that Hawkins is designed in such a way where he has like such unique utility effects, it does have me a bit concerned as for the upcoming content, like if you don't pull your own Legend Hawkins, is it going to be very difficult to deal with Treasure Map, let's say, or the Turtle Farming event. We'll have to wait and see of course, but it could be very annoying, I could see that for sure. The Sugafest debuts March 25th for part 1, you have part 2 on the 26th, and part 3 on the 27th, so you don't have to wait too long if you are waiting for a specific part. Once again, I want to reiterate to you guys, May 12th is the big anniversary event, you probably want to conserve your Rainbow Gems for that. So May 12th being the big, uh, you know, anniversary event happening this year typically there's always going to be you know the end of month batch so the end of april there's also going to be another generic sugofest batch usually they introduce something in that batch that is very fascinating gets a lot of people wanting to pull on on those uh, on those sugofest for those types of units i would highly advise to avoid that if at all possible but anyways i digress we're here to talk about this batch here today so we were able to talk about the legends yesterday which is the most exciting part of any uh, normal sugo fest batch but we didn't get a chance to look at the rare recruits so we have drake and another zoro so zoro just keeps getting relegated to rare recruits lots of zoro rare recruits as of late like i swear over the past maybe 12 months how many zoro rare recruits have we actually had like i I feel like it must be at least 10. It, it just, we've had so many of them. So let's go ahead and break down exactly what these characters do. Zoro is a Psy driven slasher, and it makes sense with the theming of the batch that he's actually a driven unit. A lot of the recent Zoras that have released have actually been free spirit, working with a lot of the Sugo Fest exclusives that have come out. Um, so the fact that this guy is driven, you know, going back to his roots, and the fact that the batch is basically driven focused, it does make a lot of sense. So, we have Zoro here. His captain effect really doesn't matter. The special ability, though, is really fascinating. So, it removes defense up and threshold by five turns, but then it also sets defense to zero for one turn. And then it says, if the crew has a, a conditional boost when you launch the special, you increase the conditional boost by 0.25. And then it still gives you a two times defense down conditional boost otherwise. Furthermore, if you have five or more driven characters on the crew, you get 10% driven resistance to all enemies for one turn. It's kind of interesting, I guess. Um, it is kind of, you know, strange that you have a character that does a defense down conditional boost, but also removes five turns of defense up. Typically, you don't need that. You know, normally, if you've got a character that removes their defense or sets it to zero, you don't need to remove their defense up. But I like that this unit has that anyway, because sometimes, you know, these units that have defense down effects, defense down conditionals, if they're not removing 100% of defense, it can still cause you problems. And sometimes you don't want to use this guy for the conditional boost. You, you may want to use him for the effect of removing defense up. And it does specifically state that the effect to buff conditional boosts doesn't specifically say defense down conditional boosts so if you got another character on your crew that has a conditional boost that is focused on a different status effect you can use that special first then use zoro to not only remove these defensive effects but then also buff whatever other conditional boost you have by 0.25 so even though at face value the design of this rare recruit seems odd i think that they've actually done a pretty good job in terms of what the special does uh, in terms of his crewmate abilities, he does have a fascinating one here where it reduces his own cooldown by one turn every time another Driven or a Slasher uses a special. So I like that, enable enabling him to generate his special much faster. And his support effect attaching to Psy characters, so no restriction there, just any Psy unit. But when they use their special, it boosts damage dealt to defense down enemies by 1.2 for one turn. We've seen a couple of these supports in the past that have had built-in conditional boosts within their support effects. And normally, these are not very useful supports. They don't really see that much play. You know, typically, if you want to deal with a conditional boost, you just want to use a special that does the, the conditional boost because the multiplier is much more significant. So, this would be a lot different if it actually, you know, allowed you to 
proc the conditional boost as well as give you the buff at the same time because it would essentially just be a 1.3 boost the fact that he doesn't do that means i don't think it's going to see that much play but that's the zora rare recruit next is going to be the x drake who is an int striker slasher captain ability once again doesn't really matter that much but then the cooldown or the special should we say uh reduces cooldown of int and psi characters by one changes type slots of those characters into matching removing five turns of attack down and five turns of chain multiply growth rate reduction which is kind of odd because you know removing chain reduction it doesn't matter a lot of the times you can get around it with a chain boundary or a chain lock normally you don't need to remove it but i assume this component will be useful in either the upcoming treasure map or probably in the turtle farming event Furthermore, it's going to cut your crew's health by 80%, but then 30 times the HP lost is dealt as damage to the opponent. That's actually going to end up being a lot of damage. Unfortunately, it doesn't have self cooldown reduction because you could use it to reduce the cooldown of your crew as well as getting damage. This unit could have been an amazing speed farming unit. Unfortunately, they missed the mark, I feel there. But then uh, it also gives a 2.25 times attack boost to int and psi characters for one turn. I think it's like not a bad unit. This unit's like pretty solid, honestly. Um, looking at the crewmate ability though, he does resist special reverse, which is very good because he himself gives uh, cooldown reduction with his special. But uh, more interestingly, if he has an int slot and you tap with him, he buffs your attack buffs by 0.2. This is really good, meaning that you know this character by himself can potentially get a 2.45 attack boost multiplier from a rare recruit is very good um but you know if you have a better attack boost on your crew as long as this guy attacks with an int slot you can buff whatever attack boost you have by 0.2 so i think it's honestly pretty good i think both rare recruits are built like really well the, the good design choices here the support effect attaching to zoro kobe or helmeppo which is a nice uh, array I, I, I like the fact that kobe and helmeppo are getting a bit more support and the effect itself it's just nine percent base attack and 1.3 damage bonus to scratchman apu doesn't really make a lot of sense thematically because kobe and helmopo have not come across apu in any sense um and there aren't too many scratchman apu bosses that you're gonna have to come up against either so i don't really like this that much uh it's kind of a meme support that's gonna see not really much play but hey if you're in the situation you've got a support that can do that which is i guess is kind of fine so that's the rare recruits, and of course we have the two new Sugofest exclusives, which we did talk at in extensive length in the video yesterday. Uh, before we wrap up this video, we will briefly uh, have a look at the event island, because there is the introduction of the new turtle farming event, where it includes the numbers, which are those big giant ogre characters, a part of Kaido's crew. Uh, at this current point in time, you cannot view the information in-game as to what this character does, we did see on the official Twitter post um, on, on the Japanese One Piece Treasure Cruise Twitter account that this unit looks to have a multi-stage special and he does give himself cooldown reduction and I don't know. We don't know exactly what this character does. I'll probably talk about it once the actual event goes live for you guys. But overall, it seems like a pretty interesting one for sure. And of course, like always, there is going to be some Chopper Man missions relating to the turtle farming event where you can get your hands on further turtles. Rainbow gems, of course, I believe that it's a total of up to like 50 rainbow gems if you complete all the missions. And also level limit break wanted posters, which are going to be very useful in the future, of course. And also additional legend tickets and also guiding keys, which are very hard to get your hands on. So uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about in this video. I will upload some more videos over the coming days or so because uh, we also have a brand new batch of level limit breaks which I want to discuss with you guys and also a showcase with the 6 plus Shanks crew uh, very very fun legend to use of course and the Kizuna Clash is still live right now so I want to make sure to get up another video for you guys regarding that show you guys a couple of different teams I was working on but anyways that is going to wrap it up from me thank you so much for watching and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.